Good evening and welcome to our Monday Thursday service. Um, tonight we'll return to the altar rail and commune as we have done before. We know there are a few. We would like families, of course, commune together next to each other, but probably only three or four, maybe four if there's a couple families on each rail. So we have four rails up there. And we'll commune as we always did, coming down the side aisles. Um, we look forward to that as we celebrate once again. Our opening hymn is O Living Bread from Heaven. We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. During this Lenten season, we have heard our Lord's call to intensify our struggle against sin, death, and the devil. Everything that prevents us from trusting in God and loving one another. Especially since it is our intention to receive the Holy Supper of our Lord Jesus Christ on this night, when he instituted this blessed sacrament. It is proper that we examine ourselves since this holy sacrament has been instituted for the special comfort of those who are troubled because of their sin and who humbly confess their sins, fear God's wrath and hunger and thirst for righteousness. Since we confess that we are incapable of delivering ourselves 
our Lord Jesus Christ came to fulfill God's law for us and deliver us by taking on himself our sin and the punishment we deserve. The sacrament of Holy Communion was instituted by our Lord in order that we may receive and more confidently believe his forgiveness and be strengthened in the faith and in holy living. Therefore, whoever eats this bread and drinks this cup faithfully, believing the word and promise of Christ, dwells in Christ and Christ in him and has eternal life. When he says, do this in remembrance of me, he means that we are truly to believe that we receive his body and blood which was sacrificed for us on the cross and raised again to give us forgiveness and life eternal. We also are enabled to receive his command to love one another as he has loved us. As he washed his disciples' feet, so we by our words and actions serve one another in love. May the almighty and merciful God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ by the Holy Spirit accomplish this in us all. Amen. We pray. O oh Lord, in this wondrous sacrament, you have left us a remembrance of your passion. Grant that we may so receive the sacred mystery of your body and blood, that the fruits of your redemption may continually be shown in us. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first lesson for this Monday, Thursday evening is taken from Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 31 to 34. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, not like the covenant that I made with their fathers on the day when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant that they broke. Though I was their husband, declares the Lord. But this is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts. And I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And no longer shall each one teach his neighbor and each his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke chapter 22 verses 7 through 20. Then came the day of unleavened bread on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. So Jesus sent Peter and John saying, go and prepare the Passover for us that we may eat it. They said to him, where will you have us prepare it? He said to them, behold, when you have entered the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him into the house that he enters and tell the master of the house, the teacher says to you, where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room furnished. Prepare it there. And they went and found it just as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover. And when the hour came, he reclined at table and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise the cup after they had eaten, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. The gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. 
As we are seated, we will profess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. with gladness leave me gloomy haunts of sadness come into the daylight splendor there with joy thy praises render
Our text for our sermon this evening is really all of the lessons from the Gospels, the three that recount the Lord's Supper, institution of the Lord's Supper, and the one from the Gospel of John that is the only one that talks about the disciples washing the disciples' feet. Someone has said, a night like this, a feast like this, is not a time for too many words. The Lord's Supper, Holy Communion, the Eucharist, whatever you call it, is just too loaded with sign and symbol and word. And magnificence at that. And so I would honor that with you this evening and like to recall with you just briefly the celebration of this meal. It was the Passover meal which links us to the exodus from Egypt with Jesus and his disciples. Why is this night different from all other nights? That was the beginning of the Passover meal and it was given and answered by the youngest in, at the table at that Passover table in Jewish society. And I thought, I wonder who of the disciples was the one chosen, was the youngest in that group that evening. Uh, some say it was John, but that would ask the question because they were celebrating that Passover meal. It was steeped in tradition. Tonight, we give another answer. The first answer was because this is the night when our Lord delivered us from slavery and Egypt. But tonight, we give another answer. An extended answer that lasts for time and for eternity. Because Jesus gave the night new meaning to his disciples and to the church. With the washing of the disciples' feet at the beginning, a new feast would carry us for time and to eternity into the loving arms of the Father. And this is so, this is called Monday, Thursday, the day of the commandment from the Latin word mandate. Something new is added for the disciples to their feast. And we seek to be strengthened for life and service to one another in the world where he has placed us. Number two, this is now a new feast. With, those, with that matzah bread, as he broke it and said, take eat, this is my body given for you. And with the third cup of the feast of the Passover, this is my blood which is shed for you. And we hear those words, for you, for your forgiveness. That's new for you individually and together as the church. It is a gracious God reminding and giving us in a way that we taste and touch and hear his presence in our lives. No matter where we find ourselves, on the top of the world or the pits of self-doubt or feeling worth very little or, very or in a very ordinary place in life. It is God embracing and surrounding us with his presence and forgiveness. That is a new and powerful meaning. That is to carry us because it is he that is carrying us through our lives. That's different from what we hear in our world of violence, of me first, of how will I benefit, or what matters. It's something else. It carries us. And this, different, this night is different because as Dietrich Bonhoeffer, the Lutheran pastor martyred under Nazi regime just before 
the end of World War II, wrote in his book, Life Together, these words, this fellowship of the Lord's Supper is the superlative fulfillment of Christian fellowship. As the members of the congregation are united in, bo in the body and blood at the table of the Lord, so will they be together in eternity. Here the community has reached its goal, joy in Christ and climaxed in his, this sacrament, the foretaste of the feast to come. A feast that many of our loved ones who have gone before us celebrate and taste constantly at the Lord's feet. That's different. And then there is one more thing about this night and about this meal, which is different from the first Passover meal. The words of a choir anthem send us out to love and serve and praise. Sum it all up. We don't remain at the table, but we move out with his new commandment out there. All of our days and all of our years. Enough said. Let's celebrate. In the name of the Father and of the Holy Spirit and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. pray. O God, the Father, fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you to forsake, not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and our minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. Amen. Please be seated.
crucified, my Lord. Were you there when they crucified, my Lord? Oh, sometime causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there? Who the tree? Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there? They nailed him to the tree. Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble. Tremble, tremble. Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Go in his peace.